Hello, I'm Carl Rowland with Shoreline Products. Um, in the video that we're about to show you, this was a, a test program that I set up. And in the test program, instead of using feet and inches per minute, I'm actually doing a turning cycle using a G32 threading cycle. On the Masso, when you're doing a threading cycle, it's reading the actual RPM off of the spindle and it's syncing the feed rate with it in order to cut your thread for single point threading. So my thought was if I could uh, use the G32 instead for a turning operation, if I was taking a heavy cut or if I was cutting hard material and it was starting to stall the spindle that the feed rate would actually slow down. Because whether it's on a Sherline or the machines out in our shop, on those machines if you give it a feed rate in, in inches per minute or inches per revolution, and if your cutter starts to fill up with material because your coolant cut out or your, your cutter's getting dull and it's starting to s slow your spindle down, the feed rate never changes. It'll keep going at 20 inches a minute or whatever was in the program regardless of any change in your spindle speed. So what I did was use the G32, okay? This is, uh, this is brass, so obviously this is not hard material. But the depth of cut that we're taking is a hundred thousandths depth of cut with a three eighths inch boring bar, uh, which is easily twice the depth of cut that you should take with this tool and on this machine. Uh, we don't recommend more than maybe fifty thousandths depth of cut. That's a pretty serious cut. You're better off with twenty five. Um, what we also found when we ran this video is that not only did the R did the feed rate and change with the RPMs, okay, but the stepper motor and the DC motor taking a cut of this size, neither one of them stalled out, okay. Um, part of this is because as the, the RPMs dropped on the DC motor, the feed rate also was in sync with that and slowed down a little bit too, just enough for it to catch up. So. Uh, I'd like to emphasize that this is not showing the type of cuts that we recommend. This video is just showing uh, a very deep cut and what the stepper motor and DC motors are capable of doing. Um, and also how the G32 being used in a turning process instead of a single point threading process works in conjunction with the feed rate because they're in sync to slow down when, you're, when your RPMs actually drop because you're taking such a heavy cut. Let's do one more. Putting a mark on the part so you can see where it is located at the front of the chuck. Uh, the last time we took this cut, it didn't stall out the motor or the, or the stepper motors, but it did push the stock back in the chuck. So that's just so you can see how, it was, how far it was sticking out when we started. Okay, I'm gonna run it again. Okay, what you're gonna see is I'm, I'm taking a much deeper cut than I should take on this machine. Okay, the, the max depth of cut on this machine should be about 50 thousandths. This is a hundred thousandths depth of cut. Uh, it's a three-eighths boring bar that we're using that, that, far, that, that exceeds the, the capability of the tool and the machine by a considerable amount. This is to show the, the power that the machine actually has. It's not an example of cuts that you should take. So what you're also going to notice is as the boring bar is cutting, uh, when it starts to slow down the spindle a little bit, you're going to actually see the boring bar flexing up and down, and it's still not stalling up the stepper motor. Okay, so here we go. This is extreme feed and feeds and speeds for our machine. <laughs> Bye guys.
a lighter pass. Okay, and you can see where the black line is now. It actually literally pushed the stock back into the chuck. But again, it didn't stall out the, the DC motor, which is on high torque, low speed, and it didn't stall out the stepper motors. They were still going strong. Thank you.